Hi, and you welcome to another informative and insightful episode of AAU Talks from AAU TV. My name is Ajima Rachidako, and always we serve as the voice of higher education in Africa as we bring you content that inform to transform. And I'm still bringing you great, great series of episodes, right, from the University of Environment and Sustainable Development. You know, this is a very great research hub in Africa, a very unique place that you should be, and I'm glad to interact with university management and heads of faculties on very typical matters in higher education. And today's episode is no different. I'm here with Professor Anthony Amwan. He's a dean for the Faculty of Sustainable Development. And, you know, gladly, we're looking at how researchers in Africa are commercialized to the, to, to the development of the continent, more particularly the social economic growth and how these researchers and how commercialized they become open doors for our continent on the global scene. You bear with me that our, our continent's competitive advantage depends on the cutting edge researches that we produce that gives us a, 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 a floor or a table or space on the global scene to also contribute to global knowledge. And you know, all depends on how commercialized it becomes. So today, it will be amazing with Professor Anthony Amo and how, if indeed we have a research agenda in the African continent, and how well is this agenda helping us to propel our research findings to the global scene. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back from the break and you, you're watching AAU Talks on AAU TV. My name is Ajaman Otredako and I'm joined here by Professor Anthony Amwa, Dean of the Faculty of Sustainable Development here at the University of Environment, uh, Environment and Sustainable Development. Prof, you welcome to AAU Talks. Thank you very much. Great. <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the motto that I saw in UES is hope. You know, it's uh, honesty, opportunity, and the, the P stands for, um, can you remind me on the P? So it's um, honesty, mm -hmm. opportunity, mm -hmm. perseverance, and enterprise. And enterprise. And, you know, the enterprising aspect now draws understanding to commercializing of whatever that we produce, even in our institutions where, I mean, commercializing education is not really something that we know of, but we've come to understand that it plays a major role in our advancement. What would you want to say about the role you play here and how you are ensuring that students that are produced for this institution are poised to commercialize their knowledge? Um, as a matter of fact, what we are doing here at UE, UESD, it's a little bit different from the other universities. Mm. What we are doing is that um, even with our teaching our classrooms, when you visit our classrooms, the teaching experience is totally different. We teach students within the first one are the theories and the concepts. Then after that, we solve questions based on the theories. Mm. The last R is strictly for industry experience because yeah. we want the students to have that experience so that when they go into the world out there, they will not find themselves wanted. So by the time you finish UESD over the four year period, you should be ready for the job market and you should be ready to sell off whatever you came to learn from this. Mm. There, there, there seems to be an ironic narrative here that students are poised with so much enthusiasm to make a difference, but when they get to the, the real environment, it is not viable for commercialization of knowledge. What would you say is the current or the previous research agenda for the country and the continent? And is it really viable? Okay, so for research agenda, I think almost every university um, in Ghana has a clear-cut research agenda because for you to get your promotion, for you to be promoted from one level to the other, mm. you need to have some level of, um, some amount of publications. Yeah. And um, so that is clear with every university in addition to community service and teaching experience. Mm. So these are the three things that come together for you to get your promotion. So research agenda it's very clear mm -hmm. and there are research policies and ethic committees, um, ethics committee uh, for almost all the um, universities in Ghana. Mm. Looking at the research agenda, it, it comes with some commitment to funding 
budgetary allocations to ensure that it, it isn't so well, like going through a, a needle or a pinhole to get these finances out for the good of the institution. How well, how convenient has been has these allocations been to enhance researchers and open the floodgate of research finders, creating more room for researchers in the institution? Okay, so let me start from research funding. Mm. Um, if you look at Ghana in, as a country, uh, our commitment in terms of funding research has been on the law. Mm. Um, it has not been that um, significant. Um, if you look at, for example, book uh, um, allowances given to um, faculty members, yeah. it's only about $1,500. Mm. Um, if you look at how much we are given in terms of research, it's just 2,500 Ghana cities for the whole year, which is not even enough for data collection. Okay, so these are some of the challenges we have so far as research is concerned. Mm. So once you are able to get enough funding, then you are able to produce quality paper or quality papers that are useful for industry and its findings can be used for something useful. Either than that, the data will not be um, of that high quality so that its findings will be relevant for um, any, any, any good use. Mm. You know, there's one other ordeal that is found in uh, research administration, which is uh, research repositories, where one can find a, a rigid bank of researchers, pick them, review them, and then keep storing these information so the university can be cited and known for, for, for bigger platforms. But how was that administered in African higher education institutions for that build-up, and even in the case of UESD? Okay, so in the in the case of UESD, and like um, some of the, I think most of the traditional universities, um, we abhor what we call predatory journals. Mm. We don't subscribe to predatory publications. So we end up publishing in... Um, Good journals, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. So once you publish in good journals, they are available, they are in repositories where people can have access to. But then once they have access to these documents, a lot of them um, are not connected to industry. It is there and there is this big difference between what industry have access to and what exists in the repository, mm -hmm. for which is also meant for industry. Yes. So that is where the gap comes in. And, you know, some also call for it being open source and also quite out of reach. Do you find universities closing the, the gates to their research repositories as a good way of protecting their knowledge? Or there's a need for them to create an open source system where universities can also interchange this knowledge and grow in finance? I think um, in this age and time, um, once you are publishing in a good journal, um, there is that option to make your research available um, with respect to what we call early citation. Mm. So you can upload, there are several platforms where you can upload um, your research mm. once you are done. Then again, we have good journals with open access sources. So mm. um, you can as well um, have your research published in those journals and it can be available to whoever wants it. Mm. There's this issue of the significance. Why, why would you want to um, aim at high impact journals overseas and not be able to create one local, strong, high impact journal? What is the essence? What, what, what influences um, higher education, academic mentors or academic players to aim at high impact journals and lose the interest in building a stronger one locally? Okay, so I, for one, or with University of Environment and Sustainable Development, we are just about a year, but then we have established our own journal. Mm. Okay, it tells you the kind of support we have for um, our local journals. Okay. But that notwithstanding, we also appreciate international journals mm. because of the competitiveness um, it brings to the fore. Mm. So because of the fact that we want to uh, be competitive out there, it is important that when you publish in local journals, you also try um, some international journals. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to have all my publications in a local journal. I would also want to have some of my publications in a reputable international journal. Mm -hmm.
you know, there, there's a call on preference. Yeah. Um, what, what, what is the, the motivating factor on the guest preference and, motiv- uh, and in trying to publish in high impact journals? Of course, uh, studies are carried out locally, but we seek to also make a mark on the international scene. They appreciate it much more than we do locally. Uh, haven't we realized a mismatch because they don't need it? It's our finding, it's our problems, but they appreciate it much more. Have you not lamented over the, the narrative thus far? Okay, so if you send your paper out there, it is believed that the peer review process is anonymous. Mm. So if you are able to compete with other people for that small space, it tells you how rich your paper is. Mm. So if you are able to compete out there, why not? So a lot of people prefer to compete out there so that they will be very competitive, um, both internationally and as well as um, on the local front. Mm. Well said then. Uh, Prof. Anthony, let's now look at this. What, in your view, after years of being in the industry for academia, what have you gathered as the factors that inhibit uh, the commercialization of our homegrown research findings right in Africa? Ah, the key one here um, has to do with the fact that some of the research we produce are just basic research. They are not applied research. Mm-hmm. Applied research can be linked, um, can have what we call, um, uh, applied research has commercial value. Yeah. But then a basic research do not necessarily um, has commercial value. Mm-hmm. So that is what the challenge is. Mm-hmm. If we are able to produce applied high standard research, definitely um, um, industries will place value on those uh, publications. Mm-hmm. But then the truth be told, in most developing countries, they are not up there in terms of um, taking advantage of research output to influence their research and development. Mm. Okay, and that is a major problem um, in our part of the world. Then again, I can also mention um, the fact that unlike developed countries where the industries will bring their research questions for the for academia to research and find answers to, mm-hmm. um, in our part of the world, it's so difficult for you to see industry collaborating with academia to produce I'm not saying it's not done at all, but it's rare. So basically, that's where the challenge is. It's, it's so far getting interesting with Professor Anthony Amwa right here, as we together with Dialogue try to have the device in terms of African institutions in their research and how far we are from commercialization. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to AAE Talks on AAE TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. And I'm here with Professor Anthony Amwa, Dean of the School of Sustainable Development here at the University of Environment and Sustainable Development. So, Prof, for one for the break, we're talking about some of the factors that inhibit research commercialization in Africa. And you mentioned a couple of things. You know, one other thing that may be, from your view, it may, it may be one of the biggest problems is perhaps with there's no instituted research ethics strategy that guides or like that, 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 that coordinates research to the scene of being commercialized. What would your view would you say about research ethics? Is it, have we got anything like African research system on African research ethics? Okay, so um, with respect to African research ethics, um, I have not yet heard about that. But I know that most of the public universities have what we call ethics committee. Mm. So you have to go through the ethics committee with your protocol Mm -hmm. before it can be accepted, Mm. um, before they will allow you to start the um, research. And once you start the research, then everything is based on what you propose to do, which has Mm. been approved by the ethics committee. Mm. What are some of the factors that you you can actually uh, mention that you believe actually inure to the good of university research going to the scene of commercialization? Okay, so um, I wouldn't want to limit it to just commercializing your paper alone. Mm -hmm. I want to extend it a little bit. Okay. Now, if you're able to publish 
good papers. Mm -hmm. You are able to attract consultancy. Okay. You are able to also apply and attract funding. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the added advantages um, associated with publishing good papers. Mm -hmm. If you don't publish good papers, it will be very difficult for you to one, attract funding, and two, also get um, consultancy services. Mm. So Prof, let's pick it on this tangent where we weigh basic research and applied research. You attest to the fact that universities in Africa mostly are known for basic researches and these don't really bring so much, they are less prospective in terms of benefits compared to applied researchers. And you know, applied researchers are quite extensive. They call for so much funding to, to bring out the best in them. Then the, 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 the matter here is, how then do we create, or let's say, create, uh, generate innovative sources of funding to push these applied researchers? How can this be materialized? Okay, so I think that we must change our orientation so far as research is concerned. Mm. We shouldn't think that we are publishing just for promotion. Mm. We should have commercialization at the back of our thinking mm -hmm. so that when we produce the research, we will not just submit the research document for promotion, but will also um, consider the probability of you know, commercializing it. Mm. If we begin to think along those lines, it will influence the kind of research we do mm. and we'll end up producing um, research output that we can commercialize. You know, why is the university, you know, the university has created that, that stigma that's not the school that you have to publish or you perish. And people are motivated to, to publish the very best the way they can and not really with an impact mindset. Yeah. How then do we delineate this kind of stigma and then open and create an aura where people publish with the, the mindset that it is for a general good to commercialize and not just to fill the books and then get my, my way up? Truth be told, um, the statement of if you don't publish, you perish, it is true. But then the question is, is that where we are supposed to stop? I believe that we need to motivate ourselves to think that although I need to publish, but it goes beyond just publishing mm. for promotion. I have to also think um, as a commercial being yeah. so that I will not just publish for promotion, but I also publish in order to get something out of it. Mm. Today, history is made with Professor Anthony Amwa trying to make a statement quite strategic, saying that for the next five years, what is the outlook for research commercialization from UESD and also from African institutions, from your own spectacle? For the next five years, if you look at our strategic plan as a university, what we want to do is to target high-class um, journals or high-profile journals or high-ranked journals. Mm. Now, once we're able to hit these kinds of journals, the added advantage is that we are able to apply for funding based on the kind of research we do. We are able to attract funding based on the kind of research. We are also able to serve as consultants on projects based on the kind of research we do. And we are also able to um, do applied research. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we are able to do this, all these things within the next five years, we will end up um, getting our project out there for commercial purposes. Splendid. With a strategic eye, Professor Anthony Amwa, who is the Dean for the School of Sustainable Development here at UESD, looks to see that with, with the, the standard measures put in place, the university looks to target high-ranking journals, and not just that alone, but looks forward to now 10 researchers, commercialize them, and then make solutions for the continent of Africa, not just Ghana alone. So great time with you, Professor Anthony Amwa, for your contribution on AAU Talks, and also your time as well for watching us and picking your insight as usual we do on the show. Have a nice day, and then catch you next time on AAU Talks. Bye. I